is so lucky. Today we're going to talk about pre-cutting fabrics for when you're making a quilt with a lot of repetitive blocks. Uh, in particular the pattern I'm talking about today is my vintage alphabet pattern. Uh, these are the letters that I use in the badass quilt here. Um, I'm going to show you the benefit of pre-cutting them because there's 29 letters in the quilt and uh, it would be a lot easier if you have them all set out and ready to go. Pre-cutting is boring, so here I'm telling you to do something boring, um, but it's kind of like eating your veg so you can have dessert, because if you have neat little piles of everything pre-cut, then when you get to the sewing you can just zip right through it and it's really satisfying. So for a quilt like this, or as I say, other quilts that have a lot of repetitive blocks, it's really worth doing, it's much more efficient. So if you haven't paper pieced before and you're not sure how to calculate um, the sizes of fabric, I'm going to show you now how to do that. And we'll start off with the easiest, which is just rectangle to rectangle cut. It's quite obvious, but I'm going to show you anyway. And then I'm going to move on to these guys here that have 45 degree angles. 45 degree angles are really easy. Um, and they are quite commonly used in paper piecing patterns like flying geese or uh, the economy block and, and blocks like that. So let me show you how to do it. This is one of the blocks for the vintage alphabet and it's a B as you can see in the top here and it has two different sections. Not all paper piecing patterns include the section seam allowance but mine do. So that's something to take note of when you're working with um, a pattern is whether or not this exterior seam allowance is included in the pattern or not. It doesn't matter if it's not, you just need to take that into consideration when you're cutting. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to measure A1. As you know you go in numerical order. So here there's already a quarter of, a, um, a quarter of an inch included and on these inside seams there is no seam allowance included. So we need to add uh, at least a quarter here, here and here and you could in theory cut that there but it doesn't give you any room to make error. So I usually go a minimum 3 eighths all the way around which means that here where there's a quarter I just need to add an extra eighth but on these ones I need to measure 3 eighths distance. So you just put your ruler, this is the A block here, so that's the first block starting. So to measure for the A1 here I'm going to put my ruler down and I'm going to measure 3 eighths of an inch above this seam line and 3 eighths of an inch from this seam line 3 eighths of an inch from this seam line out so that's to here and 3 eighths from here so it works out to about 1 and 3 quarters by 3 so I'm just going to round that up to a 2 by 3 so you can just mark it 2 wide by 3 high inches and I do that on all of my pieces. I mark them on, on all of them before I get going. And then once I've got a whole pile of them, I can go, okay, so I need, you know, seven that are cut to these dimensions and I can just bulk cut them. And uh, the same for all the others. Okay, let's have a look at the angled pieces. So for B1, we're actually going to cut that like a rectangle. So we're going to place our ruler an eighth of an inch above that point there and an eighth of an inch past this point here and three eighths past here. So we can see that that's approximately three and three quarters by about one and three quarters. So I'm going to say a two by four. So two inches wide by four inches high. And then once I have that piece, I'll show you how we just cut that one angle, which will make it easier to join from B1 to B2. On this one here, we're going to you could cut a rectangle like that, but that means this and this would be wasted. And because we have two matching triangles, we can actually cut a square, cut it in half, and we'll have one for both B2 and B5. So I'm going to place my ruler a quarter of an inch outside that pattern cut line. And then I'm going to leave that there. Now here is the seam line over here. So I'm going to take a second ruler, just to measure it, and place this one inch marker on that seam line so that I can see where my cut line will have to be at the absolute minimum. And you can see there that it's coming out at about two and a quarter square. So I'm going to give myself a little extra and cut a two and a half inch square, which I'll show you here I've done. Uh, 
And then I'm just going to cut it down the middle. And that, I'll show you in the light box here, is perfect. I've got lots of space. Oh, that one's, yeah, lots of space all the way around. Because here's my quarter inch seam, and that's got seam allowance. So that, there's a little bit extra all the way around. And the same for this guy over here. Now for this B, B3 over here, those are also 45 degree angles and this here is a right angle, so that's really handy. You can actually cut the exact same square again and have that there. So for these two here, I just cut two blocks, two and a half inches, and uh, I'll have three triangles and I'll save the extra triangle for one of the other letters that are coming up. For B4, which is pre-cut here to that rectangle size, as you can see, um, it joins on at a 45 to B1 and B3 and it'll make our lives a lot easier if we pre-cut that 45 degree angle because it's an easy angle to cut. So we're going to place that here and place our ruler onto the fabric and just go from the corner and cut that, pre-cut that angle. We don't, we don't need to cut the other side because we'll cut that off when we use our add a quarter ruler before we add B5 on. So as you can see, if I move to the light box, when I turn that over, that's going to fit perfectly there. And it'll just be much easier. We won't have to worry about calculating that angle when the time comes. Okay, so now that we've worked out how to pre-cut the straight rectangular cuts and the 45 cuts, I'm going to show you one of the letters that has a different angle. Uh, and we're not going to calculate the exact angle, we're just going to do the quick and dirty, lazy way of doing it, but it's a lot quicker. So for these letters, all of the wider descenders are an inch wide, and all of the narrower ones are a half inch wide. So assuming you're not doing directional prints, uh, you can just cut strips for those. So the, um, the wider ones are one and a half exactly, so I would just cut one and three quarter strips, and the narrower ones would be exactly one cut, but I would cut one and a quarter or one and a half strips for those. For these pieces here, however, you'll see they're slightly different because they're uh, not regular. So what we're going to do is, you're going to place, let's say we're cutting for A6 here, you're going to place your quarter of an inch marker on the seam line, and then you want to go past, this is the point where the corner cut is. We're going to go past that by at least an eighth of an inch. But usually, if it's an angular cut, I'll be a little bit more generous. So I'm going to put a quarter of an inch past that point there, quarter of an inch past this point here. So that gives me a six and a half wide, and a, um, sorry, quarter of an inch there. So six and a half wide, and about a quarter of an inch there. So that'll take me to two and a half. So for this one here, I'm going to say two and a half by six and a half. Um, and then the same again for here. So we've got a quarter of an inch past that cut line, a quarter of an inch past this cut line, and that takes us to two and a quarter, so I'll go to two and a half on that one. So the same measurement again. For these guys here, for A3 and A1, um, because uh, A2 can come out of one of the, these strips here, the same width. Um, we'll just place that as if we've got our seam allowance there of quarter of an inch. And we need to make sure we have three eighths past this point over here and three eighths past there. So that'll be about a two and three quarter wide. And then about a two and a half high. And here you see I have all the pieces pre-cut and I put them in numerical order so that they're easy to find as you go along. Then you just start with the top piece to the second piece and as you work your way down you go through your pile. So once you've got your little pile of pre-cuts, I put them in numerical order and I put the pattern piece which I've now cut out, that section, and I just clover clip the whole lot together and there I have both of my B pieces and I'm all set to go for that one and it'll go really quickly. And you can do that for all 29 letters of this kit um, in one go. 
And like I say, a little boring to start with, but once you have it all set out, it'll make a very satisfying day putting them all together and it'll go really quickly.